All right, I'm probably going to be gone tomorrow, so I'm going to try to make a video for you to follow along of the lecture I would have given if I was there. First thing we want to talk about is the difference between scalar and vector quantities in physics. Every time we talk about some new quantity, we're going to talk about whether it's vector or whether it's scalar. The difference between these is scalar is just a magnitude of something, but a vector is a magnitude and a direction. A magnitude and a direction. So anytime you have to put a direction on something, it's going to be a vector quantity. So there's some words that we need to know the difference on. For instance, if you use uh, the word distance, distance, you measure a distance, like maybe 30 meters, that is called a scalar quantity. But if you measure a displacement, displacement, that is a vector quantity, and that would be like 30 meters, and then you have to put a direction on it, east. Or you could do 30 meters, um, like 15 degrees uh, north of uh, east, or something like this. So displacement and distance are different things. So if I were to like um, walk this far, and then I walked like this far, and then I walked um, over here, I walked over here, I would add all these up, and that would be my uh, distance that I traveled. But my displacement would just be from where I started to where I ended. This is my displacement. So if I were running around a track, for example, the distance would be how far I actually ran all the way around. But the displacement would actually be zero because I started where I where I ended. So you would have to tell me uh, like this displacement to be how far I went, and you'd also have to tell me like, you know, what is the angle like maybe south of east that this vector um, is. Another example is if I divide both of these by time, distance divided by time is called a speed. But displacement divided by time is called a velocity. And a lot of times you might have used these words interchangeably, but they're, they're not the same thing. Speed would be like 30 meters per second. Uh, velocity would be like 30 meters per second, uh, maybe negative. Negative is, a, is, a, is actually a direction. That would mean 30 meters per second down. Or you could say like 30 meters uh, per second uh, north or something. But velocity is a vector quantity. You'll notice velocity starts with a V, so does vector. Uh, speed is a scalar quantity, it starts with an S. It's a nice, easy way to, to remember that. So you need a direction with the magnitude if you're going to have a vector quantity. So when I ask you to calculate a vector, you need to remember that. That's actually, I'm asking you to calculate two different things a magnitude and a direction. Okay, um, all right. Uh, so we're, I'm gonna, normally what I did in class, um, I had, I, I lectured basically on page seven of the book, so that's where you should be following along with. And then I had everybody board battle um, page eight. So I'm gonna do um, all the problems for page seven, and then I'm gonna have you try to go board battle and try to figure out the problems on page eight, but I'm gonna go ahead and do them for you on here also. So you can go try to do them, and then you can check your work on, on the, come back to the video and check your work. So number 26, um, 1.26, does vector addition uh, matter? Does it matter on which order you add the vectors? So if I was like to add a vector over like this, and then I went down, like this, and then I went down like this, and then I added the, got the resultant vector. These are all component vectors. If I added the resultant vector, I go from the tail of the, uh, mess that up. I went from the tail of the first to the head of the last. Would, it, would I get the same resultant here if I added these in different orders? So for instance, if I did, uh, if I added this one on first, and then I went over like this, um, one, two, three, four, so it's like five over, I guess. And then I went um, like, uh, you know, down like this. If I add the resultant vector, it'd be from the tail of the first to the head of the last. Um, you should get basically the same resultant vector. It doesn't matter which order you're adding the vectors in. Um, I guess I should mention, you know, how do we draw a vector? A vector obviously is an arrow. This is called the tail, right there is the tail, and there is the head of the vector. You make it however long you want, but then once you've done that, like if I'm going to make this 10 units east, then you know if I'm going to draw add on another vector, 
like 20 units, then I need to make it, you know, basically uh, twice as long. Try to keep your vectors proportional the way that they actually should be. Okay, so number 27, we're going to do a first vector problem. It's going to be a very easy one. It says a person walks 8 meters east. So I would draw a vector 8 meters, 8 meters east. And then it then walks 3 meters west. So I'm going to add that vector on. How do we add vectors? We add them tail head, tail head, tail head, and so on. So like this vector here went from the tail to the head, and then this tail of the next vector went on the head of that, and it went, and it went down there. So we add tail head, tail head, and then the resultant goes from the tail of the first to the head of the last. That's how we always draw the resultant in. So I drew this 8 meters east vector, and then I'm going to draw 3 meters west, so I'm going to add on the tail of this next vector right on the head of this first vector. Technically, I should be right on top of the vector, but I'm going to draw it underneath so we can see it. And then I'm going to come back 3. And then I try to draw my resultant, which goes from the tail of the first to the head of the last vector. And, of course, that would be 5. I didn't draw this very good because my 5 looks about the same as my 3. So my answer would be 5 meters east. That makes it a vector. I have a magnitude and I have a direction. Okay. That's 127 easy. We're going to start getting harder here. So, no, 128. Um, we have a plane tries to fly 10 meters per second east. So, I'm going to draw a vector representing what it's trying to do. 10 meters per second. I'm going to point it east. And then it says there is a wind at 3 meters per second south. So, um, obviously, this person's not going to go east. They're going to go a little bit south of east because there's a wind that's going to push on them. So at the end of this vector, on the head of this vector, I put the tail of the wind vector, and it's only going to be three, so I don't make it as long. Okay, and uh, by the way, well, normally what I do is I kind of draw my grid systems, and then whenever I come to the head of a vector, I kind of sketch in another, another grid system here so I can see where I'm going to add the vector on. So the resultant of this vector would go from the tail of the first to the head of the last. And I want to figure out what is the resultant uh, velocity vector here for what this plane is going to do. Well, this is a right triangle, so it's pretty easy. I can use um, Pythagorean's theorem. I could do 10 squared plus 3 squared equals r squared, and r then would equal the square root of 109, which is like 10.4 uh, meters per second. So that's the magnitude, 10.4 meters per second. But this is not a velocity, this is a speed. A velocity would need a direction. How do I do a direction? Well, generally directions are angles. So you'll see that this vector is right down here. And I want to say, where is this vector on this grid? In the world, where is this vector at? And so what I want to do is I need to find like maybe this angle of the triangle right here. And I can do that because I know the opposite side and I know the adjacent side, so I can use tangent. So I'm gonna do tangent of the angle equals three over 10. And so I'm gonna do the inverse tangent of uh, 0.3 should give me my, my angle. So uh, 0.3 inverse tangent, do that in the calculator, and I get like uh, about 17 degrees, okay? So there's, there's a couple ways you could do this. You could say 10.4 meters per second at 17 degrees south of east. I could say it's 17 degrees south of east. Hopefully that makes sense. But what I, what I normally want you to do in this class is to always give the angle from north. Now this is a little tricky because in math, if you remember, this is your zero degrees and you go around this way. Right? This is quadrant 1, quadrant 2, quadrant 3, and so on. But this is not the way it is in physics. In physics, we're doing bearings or headings. So this is north, uh, west, south, uh, east. Never eat soggy worms. And north is a zero-degree bearing. So in physics, zero-degree bearing or heading is north. And then east is 90 degrees. And we're going to go around this way this time. So in physics, we do this. Math, you do this. So this is physics, so do this, please. Okay, do this. All right, so um, 
what I want to do is I want to just always give the angle from north. Find the vector from north. So I'm going to try to figure out the angle from north all the way down to this vector. That's pretty easy to do because this is 90 degrees. This is 17. So 90 plus 17 is at 107 degrees. And if you do that, you do not have to put any of the letters out here. You just give me an angle. If you give me an angle, I know that you're going from north counter or clockwise around to wherever the vector is. Okay, all right, hopefully you got that. Uh, let's try the next one. Um, 129. We have a pitcher. There's a pitching mound. Here's home plate. Um, the pitcher is trying to pitch a ball 125 kilometers per hour. There's a crosswind of 28 kilometers per hour blowing from the left. So what would that do to this ball? If it's from, from the left, from the pitcher's perspective, that means it's coming from, coming from up here. So I would actually draw the wind on like this. It's going to go to the right. And this would be 28. And so what's the resultant velocity of this ball? Well, I'm going to go from the tail of the head, tail of the first to the head of the last. And again, I can use Pythagorean's theorem. I'll figure this out real quick. 125 squared plus 28 squared equals square root. And I get 128, um, what is it, kilometers per hour. So I'm going to have 128 kilometers per hour. And then I need to figure out the direction. Well, on this, I just, I'm just going to have to figure out this angle here. I don't know where north, south, east, and west. I don't know how this baseball field is oriented in space. So... So I'm going to have to do it a little different here. I'm just going to have to get this angle here and, you know, say that it's like to the right, you know, to the right of home plate. So again, I would do the, um, basically the inverse tangent of uh, 28 over 125 should equal the angle. 28 divided by 125 um, inverse tangent is like 12.6 degrees. So I'm going to say at 12.6 degrees to the right of home plate. That'd be a lot to put into an e-lab, so I wouldn't make you do something like that. But um, that's how you do that, that particular problem. Okay, uh, one more, and then you'll start board battling. So um, number 130. So we have a plane, 425 kilometers per hour in a direction of 45 degrees north of V. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to draw my grid down here, and I'm going to come in here at 45 degrees... And I'm going to draw a plane vector that is 425. Okay. So now what we're going to do is, uh, let's see, that's what the plane vector is. And then it says a wind is blowing north at 75. So at the head of this vector, I'd like to draw in a new grid. It's nice to do this. At the head of each vector, draw in a new grid so you can get all your angles surrounding everywhere. So I'm going to put it put in here. That's 45 degrees. So that's 45 degrees. Okay. Um, so on here, I need to go a wind going north. So I'm going to go like this and I made this, uh, I made this too big. Probably it's, <laughs> I made it way too big. This is 425. This is only 75. So my picture is not very good here. Try to draw a good picture. Sorry about that. Okay. So, um, my resultant is going to go from the tail of the first to the head of the last like this. And I want to figure out what this velocity is, what this velocity vector is. So this is a harder problem because I do not have a right triangle. I cannot use Sokotoa. Um, I would love to find this angle up here in the middle because then I'd have side, angle, side, and I could use law of cosines. So I don't know if you can figure out this angle here in the middle. There's a couple ways to look at it. Um, I could extend this down, and this would be 90. So this would be 45. And this whole angle then would be... Uh, 180 minus 45, right? Okay, so that would be, this angle would be 135. Another way to do this was like, if this is 45, this angle has to be 45 too, right? Because there's there's parallel lines here and there's a transversal. So if this is 45, that's 45, and this is 90. So 90 and 45 is 135. So this angle is 135, that's what I needed. And I can use the law of cosines. So V squared is going to equal 75 squared plus 425 squared minus 2 times 75 times 425 times, whoops, I ran out of room, 
uh, cosine of the angle in the middle. So you need to really practice in making sure you can get that on your calculator correctly. So I'm going to do it out here. 75 squared plus 425 squared minus 2 times 75 times 425 times 135 cosine equals, and you got to remember to square root that, and I'm going to get a velocity of 481 kilometers per hour. You should definitely check on your calculators if you got that right or not. All right, that's the speed. I don't have a velocity yet until I get an angle. So I need to figure out where is this, where is this vector at on, on this grid right here. Well, the, the easiest way to do it is to figure out an angle in here. I'm going to figure out what theta is here. And to do that, I'm going to use the law of sines. I can't do Sokotoa. I don't have a right angle here. So I'm going to figure out this angle with the law of sines. So the sine of that angle over the opposite side, which is 75, that ratio should be equal to any other ratio. When I have sine of 135 over what I just figured out, 481. So I can cross, multiply, and divide here. I'll take 135 sine times 75 equals divide by 481, and then I would do inverse sine, inverse sine, and I get like 6.3 degrees. So this angle in here is 6.3 degrees, 6.3 degrees. So how do I figure out where this vector is? Well, I want to figure out this angle, right, from north. This is the one I want. So I can just write that angle from north. So um, I know that it's 45 from here to here, and here it's 6.3 from here back. So I can just take 45 minus 6.3, and I get like 38.7 degrees. So I'm going to say 481 kilometers per hour at 38.7 degrees. There is my answer for this problem. I can QED that. Okay. All right. Um, that is all of page 7. Um, we want to go to the boards now in board battle um, page 8. And I'll try to do, maybe I'll do another video. This video is pretty long here. So I'm going to do another video um, showing you how to do all the problems on, uh, on page 8. So you'll want to go to the boards and try to figure them out. And then you can come back and watch the video on how it works.